So Utah is known for its soda shops. What is your go-to drink? <laughs> you know what? I, I uh, um, un well, fortunately or unfortunately, my son and many employees here at Wilson Motor got me, uh, got me on swig. And I have been a, a half and half guy for probably 15 or 20 years. I go with half Coke and half Diet Coke. And I've been doing that type of, or that uh, uh, percentage for a number of years. So I, I should have seen that coming, that people would want, you know, what was it, were they dirty drinks and all those different things. So I'm a half and half with just a little bit of uh, either lime or a little bit of cherry, so. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I can plug Swick. I, I, I don't want to get mad at anybody else, but uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, how well do you think Utah has done in responding to COVID-19 and what do we need to do in the future? I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, oh, we're good. Don't worry. You know, I, I think mistakes were made. Um, you know, the state auditor Dougal is doing a, an audit right now. I know the legislative audit uh, board did, did an audit on things that we can do better. I, I think they do a, did a pretty good job, the, the governor, the lieutenant governor, and, and the, the, letter, the leaders. Um, you know, we just didn't know what, what COVID-19 was going to do. And so they were, you know, they were taking a lot of precautions and doing the best they can and trying to acquire our personal protective equipment. Uh, but boy, they, they, they did make some mistakes on the, you know, no, no bid contracts that you know we're still paying for a, an app for what three four million dollars that never really worked properly we're still paying three hundred thousand a month in support of an app that doesn't work i i that just doesn't make sense to me so we've got to do a better job i one of the um reports came out last week the legislative report and and one thing that we have got to do a better job is bring people together um you know the health department across the state, the state health, the county, business leaders, the health industry. I spent some time a couple of weeks ago talking with the hospital association and things that, you know, ideas that they had. Um, they've been talking with, with a number of, of different people in industries. Uh, and like I said, with being part of the New Card Eaters of Utah, it's helped me be part of the business coalition out of Salt Lake City that a lot of these industries are involved with and you know, have relationships with. But really, I think the thing we need to do is, of course, you know, now learn uh, from what um, we, did, we did well and we may didn't do as well uh, for, for the next possible pandemic. You know, we are gonna get through this um, and um, you know, we, 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 we're gonna be better uh, for when the next one comes, if it does. Um, let, let's hope that it, it doesn't, but be prepared for if it does. And, and I think it's very important that we get together, you know, as uh, when this is even even now and, and we get done, get bringing people together uh, to make sure that we have the ideas uh, and the guidelines in place for the, when the next thing happens. But um, like I said, we've got to do a better job of, of, the, of, of being able to not waste and uh, being held accountable uh, for the money that is spent. We've got to be efficient and effective, and, and there's a lot of ways we weren't. Uh, but, but then again, with what they're up against, I, I always hate to look back and criticize, you know, knowing at the time, boy, we we're all, you know, we're talk about disruption in everybody's life. I mean, it was, it was uh, something nobody saw coming and, and I, I've got to give, uh, give them credit um, for a lot of areas that they were able to secure. But, and the other thing we need to start doing, I think, is we need to start uh, having these supply chains in, in hopefully in Utah. Uh, we, we can't rely on China, we can't rely on Russia or other countries uh, for these uh, necessary supplies, uh, personal protection equipment, and also, you know, vaccines or drugs or other types of, of things. I think we've learned our lesson and we, we need to get those supplies back to the United States. And, and I even think back in Utah because states were, you know, they, they were bidding on the same type of, of, of equipment and you know, the protective equipment and, and you know, we, we hopefully will be able to get, uh, and we've got some uh, amazing small businesses and businesses in Utah that, that could handle that. 
So let, let's let's hope that uh, I think we'll be much much better prepared. And and like I said, I've already started that conversation with a number of uh, industries and and Senate leadership. I, I I've talked with them, gosh, probably in the last couple months, talking with the Republican leadership about um, you know some different things that we can that we can do better. So great question. Sweet. Thank you so much. Um. Well, hopefully, hopefully, I guess one thing, and sorry about that, Marin, but I, I hope we can be diligent and, and, and get through this pandemic. I mean, you know, we're not through it yet, and, and we've still got some concerns. I don't want to get, you know, closed back up again. I've, I currently, I've got five of my kids, believe it or not, uh, attending Utah State University right now, and I, I'm a graduate of Utah State and went to Logan, Logan High and Logan School District and stuff, and, you know, we, we just have to be diligent, be careful, and, and make sure we get through this pandemic. We we got to make sure we don't get another uh, wave, and and uh, I, I've got um, uh, you know just concerns that we 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 get through this one uh, before we start patting ourselves on the back. You know we we've still got a long ways to go. Hopefully the vaccine will be here and be available in, in the number of doses that we can get through it. We we will get through it, and um, we all have to you know have hope and and do what we can to uh, I said um, alleviate the risk. Great. Okay. Um, what are you doing now and what will you do in your position to combat cl climate change? Well, climate change is something that I, you know, a lot of politicians don't agree, but, you know, I, I do agree that in climate change, it's definitely things that are, that are, that are changing. Um, I, a number of years ago, I've been concerned about our air quality here in Cache Valley for a long time. Been here my whole life. Uh, I've got uh, kids with asthma. I've got a 91-year-old mom, mom who uh, is on oxygen. So it, it, it's something that we have got to make sure we have air quality uh, improvements. And, and those, those improvements have, have come about in the last number of years as vehicle emissions, being part of the car industry, automobile industry. Um, our emissions are getting better. The type three fuels is gonna be a big help. And currently we have about 600,000 vehicles that are 2004 and older. And those vehicles in some cases are 30 times worse uh, for emissions than our 2018 models with type three fuels. As those vehicles are eliminated from our roads and we've got a great program right now with the Bear River Health, Health Department where people are able to get subsidies of up to four, you know, three, four, five thousand dollars towards a newer vehicle if their old vehicle does not pass emission tests. So those that that will improve our our, our air quality will improve as those vehicles are eliminated and we and we're able to replace with better um, better uh, emission uh, vehicles. Also, we've got a, you know, a wide variety of electrified vehicles. I've been selling Nissan Leaf for a number of years. Um, but the thing I'm probably, you know, so, so like I said, it's, it's a big, um, um, important issue for me. Let me tell you why. I have been walking the talk for a number of years. Um, I installed 435 solar panels on top of Wilson Motor. A number of years ago because I wanted to do my part to improve and do what I can for for air quality here in Cash Valley knowing that we're in a unique situation with our valley where you know it's very easy for the uh, inversions during the winter for, for for the you know red air days luckily they've been less last year I mean obviously the weather is a part of that but with 435 solar panels you know, we've been able to be very self-sufficient with the long summer days of the, you know, the, the uh, sun uh, to produce our own energy. Not only that, we've been selling it back into to Logan City and the grid. But a number of years ago, um, knowing that electrified vehicles were going to be coming, and unfortunately with COVID-19, electrified vehicles have been delayed a little bit because of the investment needed by the manufacturers. They've held them up a little bit, but we've got a number of electrified vehicles Ford's got the Mach E, and boy, there's there's uh, many many manufacturers that have spent you know billions of dollars in uh, in that industry and in that technological uh, advancements have have, a, have occurred and with with battery um, usage and, and and being able to go 
you know, over 200 miles, 300 miles. Uh, but with, with the solar panels and renewable energy, uh, I always had, my vision was to be able to, um, you know, uh, power and recharge those electrified vehicles with renewable energy here at Wilson Motor Company. So, like I said, it's something that, that I, I feel strongly about, something I'm going to work for is, is, you know, air quality. We, we've got to keep our, that's, that's very, very important for future economic development. Um, you know, our, our uh, population is looked to, is possibly going to double in the next 20 to 30, well, it will double, depends on how many years, 20 to 30 years. And, um, you know, with, with that increase in population, roughly 70% of that increase is our kids and our grandkids. So I've got kids and grandkids here in Cache Valley. You obviously have got, you know, uh, in Colville and those areas. So um, the, the growth is coming. Uh, there's not much we can do about that. We just have to prepare for that growth, make sure that economic development, that we bring industries here to Cache Valley for higher paying jobs that have the same vision as we do, that is of, of keeping the air clean. And there's a lot of companies out there that, uh, you know, that are very, very um, involved in environmental issues. So uh, we, 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 can, we can get higher paying jobs. Um, and uh, right now we've got a $13,000 deficit between our medium income and the state's average medium income. So we, we've got a lot of room improvement. I've, you know, I've got, like I mentioned, five kids that are attending Utah State University. And they're having issues right now with trying to find, obviously going to school, trying to find jobs that will afford them to be able to stay here and build, you know, affordable housing is a big problem right now. And I won't bore you with all the, I've been talking with people in the, you know, realtors and, and the building industry and, you know, what can we do? We, we, we need to improve or increase our supply. Right now, the demand is just through the roof. And it's a number of reasons. We've got people moving in from outside the valley. What's interesting is people are moving here from even Utah and Salt Lake County that want to get out of, you know, and maybe even go into Colville. I'm sure they're moving into those areas too because they all want to get out and get into these areas. So we've got it. We've got a growth problem. We've got to be smart about it, smart growth, and um, that's why we need to make sure we have the infrastructure. I've I've spent uh, time uh, in the past working with UDOT. Utah Department of Transportation on some issues we've had here in Main Street, and, and we've got to bring UDOT together with business leaders, city employees, uh, city officials, county officials, and, and, with, and, and work on getting our infrastructure where it needs to be. I'm concerned that if you have growth without those infrastructures in place, uh, you're going to lose your identity. I think you're going to lose some values and you know, there's a reason why people want to live in Cache Valley and Rich County and Colville, because it's a wonderful place to raise a family. Um, but we've got to make sure that they have higher paying jobs and that, that they can afford, you know, housing. We need multi uh, price points in, in housing. You know, in my lifetime, I spent a lot of time as an, in an apartment. I spent time in a twin home, you know, as I work my way up into a, you know, into a single family dwelling. So we need to have those um, um, choices available, uh, you know, hopefully for my kids and my grandkids and, and other citizens in Cash Valley. And boy, it's a long range. Sorry about that answer, but you can see how everything is so interconnected, like education. We've got to make sure our education is, you know, is funded with enough dollars that uh, our kids, there's no better investment we can make in our future than in education for our kids. Um, I, I, I toured, I've, I've been up to Utah State University, I went through Space Dynamics Lab, I went through the uh, Bridgeland Technical College, went down there, that's a very, you know, we're so fortunate to have these great, two great institutions, and because they're going to be able to help um, educate and train our kids for the future, uh, uh, you know, when you look at innovation, you look at, you know, artificial intelligence, you look at autonomous vehicles. I mean, what's interesting is the, the, the economic boom that we've had mainly in the, on the Wasatch Front. Uh, the last, you know, in the last five, 10 years, a lot of those industries weren't even around 10 years ago. 
and you look at the you know financial uh, fintech and you look at so many more industries that uh, are just developing and like i said innovation uh, I read one article where roughly they said 40% of our current jobs could be eliminated in the next number of years with innovation, but they're going to be replaced by, you know, other jobs. Um, we just got to have to make sure that we have the vision um, to bring those uh, other types of industries, um, you know, higher tech type uh, industries that are going to be clean and smart uh, with, with our environment and uh, to give those opportunities for even students at Utah State um, who would like to stay here in the Valley. And uh, like I said, I'm very fortunate I have the opportunity because of hard work that my grandpa and my dad put in in, in starting a business. And uh, I had that opportunity um, to stay here in the Valley and to raise my, uh, you know, raise my, my kids. And like I said, I've got some of my kids and grandkids here in the Valley. So very important and uh, like I said, we, we need to make sure we keep our, our air quality and obviously water and other, other things uh, um, improvement, improve on those. Well, sorry about that, that's so long. <laughs> it, it did so many things that are, that are, that are involved and, 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 and are, um, boy, you work on one and, and you really need to work on all of them uh, you know, for overall improvement. So I, I'm excited. I, I, I'm excited to uh, get working on a lot of these, all these issues. So. Great. <laughs> um, approximately 75% of state of the state consists of public lands. How will you address public lands usage? Well, it's a great question. And, and, it, and it, it's probably, I've, I've talked with our first congressional uh, district Republican candidate, Blake Moore, and he, he, he's going to be involved with that quite a bit. Um, excuse me. I, um, I, I do believe that local control is, is usually more efficient and more effective. Um, but, but I, 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 I haven't studied that issue at length. I've talked with Blake Moore, uh, and others. Um, I, I will tell you this, that I, you know, I'm not for, completely taking all the public lands to turn over the state because I think there's some that are um, are, are better managed um, by the federal government so something I probably have to research and look at a little bit more I think it, I think it has to be uh, an individual um, um, you know, look, look look at the you know which, which lands we're talking about maybe a, a uh, uh, example of uh, well, we'd have to look at each one on its own, I think, to, to decide which, which ones are better controlled by the state, and which ones are still better by the federal government. Um, but you know, we, we have a lot of federal lands here in the state, and, and you, you look at the state trust fund for education, and you know, the, the, the federal government is, is not um, uh, contributing their fair share into our education uh, fund, and so, Hopefully we can work with the federal government. Uh, you know, there's a number of, uh, you know, most states are, there's education's funded by um, property taxes. And with the state of Utah, most of our property land is, is owned by the federal government. And um, that's where the problem occurs is, uh, you know, we, we just don't have the funding that most states have with property taxes. And, and we, we're looking for the federal government to step up and uh, contribute more to our state fund uh, for education and because of their ownership of the land. So um, well, it's one, one I need to you know, probably take a look at more and, and uh, it, it'll probably be, um, you know, just, I'd have to look at it and study uh, where the lands are and, and decide if it's something that, that uh, would be better off managed by the state or by the federal government. Perfect. Um, what music podcasts or audiobooks have you been listening to recently? Oh boy. Um, I, as far as books, uh, I, I usually have read. I, I did have audio book. I, I, um, uh, most of them have been political books, and uh, within the last year or two. And, um, but, but I am currently reading some books, so I, I usually just do it the old fashioned way. But, um, 
Uh, I, uh, boy, good, good question. I, I should be listening to as much driving as I've, I've done a little bit of driving, but uh, haven't, haven't. I need to get me some audio books. So I'm looking forward to you recommending some. So <laughs> I don't listen to much either myself. So <laughs> I'm not a good, get a, like a. All right. Well, we're on, we're on the same boat on that one. Yeah, so. we are. <laughs> okay. Um, how will you represent Utah's large college student population? Well, like, like I said, it's interesting, uh, Cache Valley, uh, half of our population is, is 25 and under. And, and a lot of that's because of Utah State University. I, I think having five kids currently attending Utah State University uh, gives me a pretty good outlook. And knowing what they're going through with housing costs, concerned about you know, what jobs are gonna be uh, available for them when they graduate, um, also, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about the cost of education. Um, you know, I, I, are, are students getting a, a fair, uh, good education for what they're spending? I mean, I know what, uh, you know, my, my kids are spending on, on education. It, it's a lot of money and I want to make sure that they're getting, you know, they're, they're, uh, a good quality education. And uh, so I, I, uh, I do, I've been a big supporter of Utah State University. Um, know a number of the people up there have for many, many years. Um, but, but I was concerned, uh, I think a number of years in a row, uh, the, the, they approved a tuition increase without really them uh, make, uh, proving that they needed an increase. And that's something I know they've, they've addressed and changed. Uh, but I was, I was very concerned about that. I, I think we need to make sure that uh, um, the education costs are in line and uh, hopefully we can maybe reduce those costs as we do more you know if we do more online I, I still think in person um, is, is still the best type of instruction so um, I'd hate to have them go away from that completely um, like I said I graduated from Utah State University many moons ago but um, you know uh, boy that one-on-one -on -one uh, instruction still hard to beat in my opinion but uh, like I said having the having the five kids at, at Utah State uh, having many kids that graduated from Utah State uh, have attended other universities um, I, I think the other thing is very important in fact I was talking to a Utah State student yesterday I uh, happened to run into him uh, just on the sidewalk and we were talking and and I mentioned to him you know uh, how important it is that our young people get involved in the political process and I, I think, I, I hope that the young people know that, that, boy, they could be a big part of the, you know, future of, of our state if, if they would get involved. But I also understand that when I was that age, and gosh, you're worrying about jobs, you, you've got young kids, you're trying to start a family, worried about housing. I mean, your, your time is, 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 is very short, you know, for, for political, um, um, the, the political process, but I, I hope they get involved, do what they can, obviously registering for, to vote, be involved with your caucus system um, is important. I mean, I was, I went to Boys State and was uh, fortunate enough to be elected to Boys Nation. So I, I, I just love the political process, even from, you know, and when I was in college at Utah State University and, and on, you know, I, I think I've voted in every single, uh, presidential election that, uh, since 1980 and uh, been, been involved what I could, um, knowing that with the family and, and those things, I was somewhat limited, but I, I just hope that the students get involved and at least vote and, and, and be involved with uh, and be educated on, on, on what's happening and on what the policies are and what's going on in our country. Uh, this is a very important election and boy, there's a lot of things going on that, that are gonna, I think, could have an effect on our freedoms and our liberties. And um, uh, it's just very concerning uh, for me and for my kids and grandkids. And, 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 I, and I, I'm sure that uh, uh, young people will, will hopefully get involved. And that's why, Marin, I think it's great that you're doing this. And, and I hope that, uh, like I said, people, so that the students will, um, will get out and, and use their political power because 
you know, you're looking at the population and you brought up a great point that, boy, if 35 years and under, you know, population of the state of Utah, they could just about control <laughs> politics if they want to in the state of Utah, they got together. And I, I think it's great. Every vote matters. Every vote counts. I was involved with an election a few years ago with our new party chair here in Cache Valley. And the vote, vote came down. One, one vote decided it. I mean, so it's amazing if one person had decided not to show up. Um, one vote decided out of, a, I think it was 130 votes counted, cast, and it came down to one vote. So um, I, I, hope the, I hope young people uh, get involved with the political process, and I think it would be awesome if they did. And, and so back to your point, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to disregard or, or, you know, the, the college age. Um, and what's great about college age now, boy, it goes from 18 up to, you know, 27, 28, 30 years old. There's a lot of people going back trying to improve, you know, on, on their education. And, and the other thing, like you said, we got to make sure that the education provided by our universities is, is worth the, the amount of money. Uh, that our, our our kids. I mean, you know, coming out of school with a bunch of debt is is also something that's not easy. And and uh, uh, I'm, you know, my kids are in that in that boat. So uh, hopefully, we have the jobs available that they can uh, you know can make enough money that they can pay off their debts and uh, still be able to raise a family and, and find affordable housing. Perfect. Um. What do you, what plans do you have to address racial justice and political or, or police reform issues? Well, you know, that, that's the big, uh, you know, the issue that's, that's affected our, 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 our society. It's really sad. Um, I, I think one of my, my big strong points is I think I'll be able to bring people together. Being, being at Wilson Motor Company, I have some wonderful customers who, I, who are just wonderful people I look up to. You know who who don't agree with everything I do on political, you know, uh, on policies and stuff, and I you know I may not agree with them, but we're going to agree to disagree. And I think the thing we need to do is bring people together and, and work on these issues. And um, you know, equality is a, a big thing, and it's something that um, I, you know, I'm going to work on. I've been fortunate if you've been watching my campaign, I've been able to help um, you know people uh, immigrate. Here, immigrate here um, from Africa, sponsored them coming over to this country, and they end up graduating from Utah State. And a, a, just a huge success story, one that I was fortunate enough to be involved with. Um, but uh, it, 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 you know, equality is a, a big, important issue, and, and one that I am uh, going to be working on. And you know, I won't bore you with all the things that I, I've been involved with, but it's very important that. Uh, you know, um, we get, I, I'd love to try and get, you know, more females involved with the political process of the Republican Party here in, in the state of Utah. And, and uh, that would be very helpful and equality on, on pay. And, um, you know, I've uh, been very, very fortunate to have a number of very, very close friends that uh, from um, different race and different religion and uh, and different political views and that that's uh, something that I think like I said bringing people together um, and uh, respect someone else uh, different views and different nationalities and, and I've always always done that I'm looking forward to that in the future um, and, and I, I will tell you that I'm um, very supportive uh, you know I think public safety is a very very important thing uh, across our country, and, and I, I appreciate those who serve in, you know, uh, law enforcement and also, you know, the firefighters and paramedics and, and all those that um, I think do a wonderful job. But we need to do a better job of, of, of trying to eliminate those individuals that are giving them, you know, their industry a, a, a bad name. And, uh, you know, I, in fact, I, I spent time talking with our county sheriff on Saturday. Uh, about these issues and some issues that, uh, you know, they, they, they understand that they can improve on some areas, but boy, you know, now's not the time to start defunding our police departments. They, you know, they work extremely hard uh, and doing a, doing a overall majority of them are great individuals and do a great job and we need to recognize them. And 
I'm looking to look forward to working on uh, actually increasing funding uh, for our, uh, uh, you know, for public safety uh, officers. And, and, and if we can get their compensation and their retirement plans up, then you know, we, we, we will have more people that want to be in those industries. And, and that will also give them a chance to, you know, have be maybe uh, better training and uh, better people involved. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to be on the other side of, of, of trying to improve uh, the, the funding and working with them. And gosh, they're good guys and, and good, good, good men and good women that are in that profession. And they work extremely hard. Perfect. Um, if you had to condense your platform into a tweet, what would it be? Oh boy. <laughs> well, I, I did. I, 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 in, in the primary, it was it's time. And I, I think right now, as I would put it down, in, it's time uh, to bring people together. Uh, boy, I think that's what I would what we're gonna try and do in solving uh, complex problems. And um, it, it, it's, uh, it, it, it's disturbing and, and tough looking at what's going across our country. And we have got to come together and, and really respect each each other's, um, you know, political views, and understand that it doesn't make somebody a bad person just if they think differently or they, they might be a different skin color or different religion or, or different sexual orientation. Um, you know, they're still good people, and um, boy, I, I feel strongly that, uh, you know, their voice matters and we just need to bring, you know, people together um, for a common cause and that's our great country and great place to live, especially here in Cache Valley. I mean, you know, there's a reason why we're here and, um, it, and that is because it's a, it's a wonderful place and we all need to just work together to preserve, um, you know, our, our identity, so. So I, I guess that would be, I, I don't know how long, how long of a tweet do I get? How about it, it's no, time to bring people together. So no, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. answers the question. Perfect. That's what we yeah. <laughs> Um So for my last question, um, is there anything that you would want the, the Utah state students to know? Or is there anything that you would want specifically within this article to represent you and your, um, your campaign, anything, any last thoughts or anything you did not address you'd like to address? Well, I, I, I just think, you know, you hit on a great question about, I just hope that students get involved. I, I really do. And I understand that's not e it's easier said than done, because at your time of life, you are just going, like I said, my kids, five kids going to Utah State. Um, it's, 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 it's a tough time. I've got, you know, one daughter who's attending who has two little kids, and it's tough to, you know, her, her husband is going to school, and they're, he's working full time, and you know, it's a tough time, but they are involved, and mainly, I guess, because I've been involved, but I think the thing to do is, is to make sure that uh, students know that their voice matters, and they, they, they need to get involved, and they need to know the, the different um, issues. Uh, don't rely, today, today it's so difficult to read an article. You know, I, I think there's, a, there's just not very many journalists. There's a lot of activists. And they're going to, you know, write something. Sorry, Marin, I know you're in the, in the profession, but <laughs> yeah, I think you would uh, agree with me that, that it's important that you look at a number of different sides to an issue, make sure that you're getting information that's unbiased and that it's, that it's actually a journalist or somebody and it's not an activist that's trying to spin something. And, and, and that's not easy to do. You don't have a lot of time, but um, I, I hope they get involved and because, Boy, the future, uh, boy, it, it could get scary in a hurry. And, um, you know, that, that's why I'm going to work really, really hard to make sure that, um, you know, Cache Valley in Utah is going to be a great place to continue to be a great place to raise your family and uh, not have to be concerned about safety for your kids and, and uh, even your grandkids going forward. And, um, I, I think the main thing is, 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 is to get involved as much as possible and learn, learn and, and know about the issues. So ho hopefully we can do that. I, 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 people just say that there's a lot of students that, that, aren't, that aren't involved, but 
I think there's more and more. We were able to register a number of students uh, during my, you know, pri primary campaign and during the convention, and and uh, I, I think a lot of them want to be involved. And it's interesting. Uh, I think a lot of them are kind of uh, a little little uh, embarrassed to say that they don't understand, you know, the, the political process and about caucus meetings and about the different political, you know, Republican Democrats. And that's why I'm grateful for Boys State and Boys Nation that helped me and. I would like to see more um, classes in high school, um, you know, try and teach and educate our young people on how, you know, getting involved, is, how important it is, and just a little bit of a broad range of, you know, how it works and how elected officials and, you know, your House of Representatives and the state level and, you know, senators and mayors and council people. I, I, I think it would be very, very worthwhile if, if we looked into that. So, sorry about that. I may have gone off on. No, that that answered the question. <laughs> I, I've got you know, I, I'm just passionate about, like I said, getting people involved and and excited about. Uh, you know, there's a lot of positive things to look for. I mean, was, there's definitely a lot of negative things out there. But, gosh, we are so lucky to be here in Utah. So lucky to be in Cache Valley. And I know there's a lot of students that want to. You leave Utah. They want to go to New York and maybe and work and different things. And my daughter at one time had aspirations of moving to York, New York, but those things changed. Now she just wants to try and find a you know affordable housing and and uh, a job that she can raise her her kids and and um, that's what I'm going to be working on. Um, you know to to uh, make sure we don't lose our identity and and to get bring people together. Uh, mainly, mainly to, uh, like I said, we can preserve Utah as a wonderful place to, to uh, live and to raise our kids. And um, anyway, so. Well, again, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this.